Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to prepare and quilt the back panel of the Range backpack. Um, I suggest this for when you're using quilting cotton for the exterior fabric. Uh, it just gives it a nice stability and um, adds a nice detail. You can do different designs. And so this is this blueprint is the quilting cotton and that's, that's the back panel and this is the front. So today I'll show you how to quilt this back panel. So for quilting the back panel of the Range backpack, you're going to need a few supplies. This is uh, spray-based, it's 505. Um, it's really popular amongst quilters, but I prefer it for a small piece like this, um, just because it's pretty quick and easy. Um, you could also use curved basting pins. These are designed for when you um, poke it into the fabric, it'll curve back up, and so you're allowed to close it more easily. Um, if you Prefer that you're going to also need your painter's tape. I just have a one inch 3M painter's tape that I use to tape down the first layer. Um, alternately, instead of quilt batting, you can use fusible fleece. It's just if you something you have already on hand, it's a good substitute instead of the batting. Um, I also use a ruler and I have a hair marker. This is just a, I think it's made out of plastic or resin. It's, it makes a crease in the fabric where you mark it. So if you want to do a straight line design, these come in really handy. You'll place your ruler down and score along your fabric and it makes a nice crease. And that would be for where you're actually going to quilt. So you can mark out your design before you actually start. So for preparing the layers of the quilted back, you're going to start with a layer of cotton canvas. This is a nine ounce weight natural color cotton canvas. I prefer this for this project. It's a really nice weight. Um, I You can buy it at your local quilt shop, um, Joann's, and it's nice to keep a few yards on hand. I just grab a couple yards at a time depending on what projects I'm working on and it's a nice stabilizer. It's 100% cotton so it's really nice to work with. Um, the next layer is a low loft cotton batting and the cotton batting is going to be what's going to give it the quilted look. Um, this particular brand is Quilter's Dream. Um, you can use whatever you'd like, but uh, I prefer the Quilter's Dream. You can get that at your local quilt shop. And then the last layer, the final layer on top, you're going to place your exterior fabric. That's going to be right side up. And um, that's the layering order. So it goes canvas, batting, and then exterior fabric. So to start, and because this is such a small piece, I usually would, if I was doing a quilt, I would tape it down with painter's tape, but since it's so small and the canvas is stable, I spray directly on there without using any kind of tape. So you're gonna wanna spray a light coat and keep the nozzle about six inches away from the canvas. And then I'm just going to place the batting on top. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's cut a little larger than what you'll be trimming the final size to. And I just smooth it down with my hands. And then next you're gonna spray the batting. Again, just a light coat is all you need. And there's going to be overspray, so if you are going to be doing it on like a kitchen table, just keep that in mind. You could put down a cloth, um, but it does clean up pretty easily with just water um, and soap. Then you're going to lay your exterior fabric right side up on top. And again, just smooth your hands so it sticks nicely. So then everything's stuck together and you're ready to mark out your design. Okay, so once you have your layers basted together, you're ready to mark out your design. And this is where, if I'm doing a straight line quilting, I'll use a ruler and the hair marker. If you want, you can certainly use a free motion design, a meandering design, anything you'd like. Um, I just find that straight line quilting is approachable for someone who is beginning at quilting. So to get started, I'm just going to mark the center 
have my piece and since my piece is square I'll be able to get the line marked by just marking the center and then connecting those lines and I'm not pressing super hard with the marker but as you can see it just makes it a nice crease in the fabric um, and then I'm going to make a chevron design so I'm going to use the 60 degree marking on my ruler and I'm going to use that along my center mark and since my piece is square I can use the corners to mark that angle and repeat for the other side and then to get the other markings I usually like to do an inch apart you can do whatever you like then I just line up my ruler and keep marking so I can keep marking and finish doing the rest of the piece before I get quilting but I do want to mention that for the range backpack since it's a fold over top there's gonna to be a portion at the top of this back panel that folds over and is actually on the front of the bag when it's closed so if you didn't want your design or quilting on the front of the bag showing you would just leave this portion unquilted and it's five and a half inches um, that you would leave unquilted at the top and it's up to you um, you can just base along the perimeter then to keep uh, all the layers in place so just keep your quilting design towards the bottom and you're all set to go and now we're ready to machine quilt so for machine quilting straight lines um, you're going to want a, a walking foot for your machine um, it's just a little um, it's a foot that you'll buy and it has this extra little top piece that helps feed the fabric through evenly some have a little marking arm like this, so you wouldn't have to necessarily pre-mark your straight lines, but not all of them do. The one that I have for my machine does not, so then I do pre-mark my lines. So to get started, I'm just using a poly blend. Actually, it's 100% polyester thread, and then I have my stitch length at a three. It's what I prefer. You can do it shorter. Um, that's just what I found that works best for me. So I'm going to just get started quilting and I prefer to backstitch when I'm doing a small piece like this. Um, it's just out of habit mostly. So we're ready to get started. I just follow along the crease. When I get to that center line, it's nice to do the needle down function and then pivot. And then I'm just going to continue on. So there's a few lines at least. Um, you just continue along your markings and once you're done quilting, then you'll wanna just square up your back panel piece to the measurement listed in the pattern. Um, and just keep in mind to keep your design centered if it does have a distinct center. And that's all. I hope that this video was helpful.